Hey guys, in this video, we'll see how to perform element embedding in Flutter. So this is our demo Flutter web app. The top section, you can see a JavaScript interop and a go to section. And in the center, we have the famous Flutter counter app. If we click on the button increment here, the value starts increasing. And so the value section and also in the Flutter app section, both these values get increased. We can also do the reverse in which when we click on the Flutter apps increment button, the value in the JavaScript section also increases. The next button is the hide navigation. So on click of this button, both the go to section and the Flutter apps button disappear. Next, we can also change the route or the URL for which the button inside this Flutter app goes to. If we click on this Google button, the button text changes from going to google.com. And if we click this button, it shows us the Google web page. And we can also do the same by clicking on this Flutter button. So the button text changes to Flutter dev. And if we click on this, it goes to flutter.dev. Element embedding was announced at the Flutter Forward event. And in case you missed the Flutter Forward event, I have a video which summarizes that whole event in 10 minutes. So in this feature, Flutter content to be added to any standard web div. And by this way, they also want to enable seamless interoperability between JavaScript and that code. For using the element embedding, firstly, we need to ensure we are on the master channel of Flutter. And secondly, we should have the Dart 3.0. We create a new Flutter project. And since we are only using the web, we specify the platform to be web. And we get the standard plain counter app. We install the JS package in our project. This package is important since we can use this package to annotate any function in the Dart code. And with the JS export attribute, we can call it from the JavaScript code. In the project itself, we only have two Dart files, the main.dart and counter.dart. Inside the main.dart, we simply have the myapp class, which is simply a stateless widget and has that material app. The logic from the Dart side is only present in this my homepage, which is present in the counter.dart. Our my homepage is a stateful widget. And since it's a stateful widget, there is a state associated with it, which is underscore my homepage state. We import the package JS as JS itself, and then we use the JX export to annotate our state. This JS export is basically an annotation to mark Dart classes as exportable. Let's verify if everything is working as usual. So we run the app, we click on this floating button, and yes, the counter increases. Let's now create a file called as JS interop, and we can also use this file to import in the index.html. So inside this file, we will be writing all the interop functions to be called from Flutter. Back in our counter.dat, we import the package JS util and call the function create.export. This create.export is basically used for all those objects that is marked as exportable in the first place. And basically using this annotation, it creates a JS object that forwards to the dat class. We call the set property from this JS util. So basically what this does is it says that we need to use this app state from the JavaScript also. And next we call the call method, which takes the state set. That means we can use this state set to be called from the JavaScript file as we are doing here. From the documentation, set property is used to call set property of the JavaScript. Call method is used for calling the call method and passing the list of arguments. Inside the JS file, we call the app state from window.app state. And this is the same variable which we used in the counter.dat. Inside our index.html, we simply create HTML tags like section, labels, and input buttons. We also create a div with ID as flutter target, and this ID can be anything, but basically this div would be the one which will show our flutter counter app. And if we run the app at this point, we should see the section of JS interop as we have specified in the left hand side, but we no longer see the flutter counter app. For showing the flutter counter app, we need to tweak something in the script. So we first gather the div ID flutter target which is the same as above. 
Next, we call the Flutter Loader load entry point, which basically downloads the main.dart.js. Looking at the documentation, this load entry point basically calls the on entry point loaded callback. And when the main.dart.js has been downloaded and run by the browser, this on entry point loaded receives an engine initializer object. This engine initializer is used to set the configuration and start the Flutter web engine. And this initialize engine returns a promise that resolves with an app runner object. And this app runner has only single method called as run app, allowing us to run the Flutter app. We run the app again, but still we don't see the Flutter counter app. We create a file style.css and inside the index.html, we import it. And inside this, we specify the width and height of our Flutter target. And this Flutter target is basically the same div where we assigning our run app. And also we assign a class center, which is nothing but we tell that to render our app in the center. We run the app again, and now we can see the Flutter app. Let's test the functionality. So yes, it increases. In our JS file, we just write this snippet, wherein we get the value of that input box. Next, we write a function called as update state wherein we get the count variable from the app state, which is the Flutter state, and assign it to our JavaScript input box. Heading over to the counter.dart, this count variable is present in the dart file, but it's still not exposed to the JS side. So for exposing, we simply put the JS export annotation. In the JS file, we are registering a callback to update the HTML from Flutter and we are calling app states add handler and next we are passing our function to this add handler but this add handler doesn't exist in the dart side so let's create it this is our add handler function annotated with jx export and taking a void callback parameter and if we click the button we see that nothing gets incremented to the js side and same when we click the js button nothing gets incremented on the flutter side to solve this, we initialize a stream controller and as a good practice, we close the stream in the dispose function. Next, we modify our add handler function and inside it, we listen to the stream of incoming events. These events are coming from the JavaScript side. We call the update state to render the first value as zero in the input box and we can verify the first value as zero in the JavaScript input box. We get the increment button using the query selector and register an event listener. And in this listener, we just call the app states increment. This increment is present in the counter.dart, but it's still not exposed. We add the annotation JS export and also in the stream controller, we add an event. So this line makes sure that the handler in the JavaScript side also gets invoked. And now if we run the app again, let's click on this increment button. We see that the value in the JavaScript side also gets increased. And now let's click on the increment button. We see that the value in both JavaScript as well as Flutter side gets increased. There are times when we need to copy paste a snippet and share with our teams. Introducing Pieces, a code snippet manager we have been waiting for. It's beautifully integrated in your work environment, for instance, VS Code, JetBrains, or even Google Chrome. They have a desktop app for Windows, Apple, and Linux users. Let's install the Pieces desktop app for macOS, which is entirely free. We can see all our previous saved snippets by just scrolling down here. If you want to share a snippet with your team, you just click on this button. It generates a shareable link. You can get all the relevant information from a snippet using this quick menu. So you can see here, there is a shareable link for the snippet, a description, and also related links related to this snippet. And there is a handy button which says all the activities which you did in this app. Let's say you are searching solution of a problem and you encounter a useful snippet. So let's say you want to save this. So you simply click on copy and save. It gets automatically saved inside your pieces app. And if we navigate here, we see the snippet which we just got saved.
These options are available since we have installed the pieces as a Chrome extension and this extension extracts all the snippets related to this Stack Overflow link. We can also save a snippet from VS Code by just highlighting the snippet we want to save. Right click and choose Save to Pieces. On the bottom right, we see the snippet has been saved to pieces. Heading back to the app, we see the snippet was saved. And this was possible using the Pieces plugin for VS Code. So next time, instead of bookmarking, try Pieces. We apply some styling to the CSS and if we run the app again, we see the CSS being applied. For instance, the hover and the icon turning to pointer. We create a new section using simple HTML and this time we use two buttons, Google and Flutter. And if we restart our app again, we see the values being applied and our UI looks like this. In the Dart file, we add an elevated button which looks like this and on click on this, we have nothing. So this is our function which will allow us to launch a URL when we click on that button. We create some variables with default URL as Flutter Dev. We use this condition is shown to show whether the button should be shown or not. And on press of this, we launch a URL. So this is our UI now. There is a button which says going to Flutter Dev. And if we click on this button, it opens the flutter.dev website. Our goal is to change the text of this button as per the button selected above and also the destination since as of now it's going to flutter.dev. If we click on Google button, it should go to google.com and if we click on Flutter, it should again go to Flutter Dev. In the JavaScript side, we get access to the Google and Flutter buttons using query selectors. We register the event listeners, especially the click listener on both of these buttons and call the app state's get value with google.com when google button is selected and flutter.dev when flutter button is selected. So now we need to create this get value inside our dart file. We create this function get value except the payload as string since from the javascript file we are sending a string value. Next we select the ur variable and make it equal to the new payload and also add a new event to the stream controller. We run the app again and now if we click on this Google, the text changes to google.com and if we click on this button, it opens google.com. Again clicking on Flutter, the text changes to Flutter Dev and clicking on this, it leads to flutter.dev. In the index.html, we create a new button with value as show navigation. Here is the button which we just created and our main goal is once we click on this button, this section should disappear along with this button in the Flutter app. And if we click on this button again, it should look like this. In the JS file, this is the function responsible for showing and hiding the div. We get the button using the query selector and register the click event listener. And next we call the app state show hide value, which gets the value from this show hide function as true. In the dart side, we write this function show hide value, which takes in the parameter boolean, since from the JavaScript file we are returning true or false. And based on the value received, we set the variable is shown to true or false. We run the app again, and if we click on this button, we see that the div disappears. And if we click again, it appears. But notice one thing that the value of this button or the text of this button showing show navigation. So let's fix this. We write a function show hide nav and based on this variable is shown, it changes the text from show navigation to hide navigation and vice versa. On the JavaScript side, we write a function update text. So basically, this receives the value from the show hide nav which we just wrote in the dart side. This value from the dart side is then set to the JavaScript button value. And finally, we call the add handler and pass in this update text void function. And this add handler is present in the dart file already which we had written previously. And if we restart our app again, we see that the button text is hide navigation. And if we click it again, it becomes to show and vice versa.
that's it from this video guys and thanks guys for watching